morning show you can get this kind of music. DJ Rockus on the turntable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I mean, you know, we're trying to keep it light because God, it's been heavy up in here from eradicating poverty to adolescence pregnancy mm -hmm. to the confusion at the police service commission. I know we're going to be checking in with the president of the Police Service Social and Welfare Association, uh, Mr. Gideon Dixon, to just find out what do they think about how you appoint a commissioner of police. Good morning to you, Mr. Dixon. Uh, good morning, Ms. Lico. Good morning to your viewers. Good morning, John Tobago. Yes. Now, I know, you're, I know your former commissioner and, you know, acting commissioner have been at, at the, well, in the melee of all that has been happening, probably by no fault of their own, but I'm sure that the police service has been paying attention. How has everything that's been going on affected the police service, if at all? It definitely has had an effect on the organization from an administrative perspective. Um, and when you look from a leadership perspective, though we would have been able to sustain leadership because over the years you would have had career officers coming through the ranks and have now elevated themselves to the upper echelon of the organization. So in the likes of Mr. McDonald Jacob and the three other DCPs that they, that was there, whilst the process to select a commissioner occurred, um, we won't starve of leadership. But the truth is, because of how the matter was dealt with at the level of the service commission and even the the legislative arm in terms of the legal notice and these things. Yeah. These things, now the fallout of it, we have some administrative issues because the, the pen of the commissioner is a mighty pen which was given um, authority by virtue of the constitution. He manages, he has complete control of managing the organization in terms of its um, human and physical resources. That being said, that person is responsible for hiring, for disciplining, for transferring, for promoting, for dismissing all officers or all potential officers who, who would want to become law um, police officers in the organization. Mm -hmm. Things have implication. And when you look at the, the, the wheel of power that that chair possesses, no delegated responsibility to the deputy commissioner of police could so could um could actually carry out that function because it is not it is not legislated so it must so it, it has have an it have had an impact on our organization from yeah. admin so, and, so um, and mr dixon tell us some some of stage, one one thing mm -hmm. one thing at some stage it will have an impact if not settled in the earliest possible time on the morals of the persons who it impacts the most administratively. Yeah. But tell us, uh, so when you, what you just pointed out is the hiring, the disciplining, the dismissal, the, 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 the recruitment, the transfers. What, what, how many of those the DCP Jacob will not be able to do? Well, certainly, Mr. Jacob cannot hire anyone at this point in time because it does not fall under his pen. Yeah. He power to transfer because that power is delegated to him from the, 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 the office and the commissioner. It's a delegated responsibility. The power to, to discipline. He, he cannot, if an officer is found guilty for disciplinary matters or even convicted at the court in terms of dismissal of that person, that power to transfer persons, those things, everything has been placed in a crunch or has come to a halt because that is the function of the commissioner of police. Yeah. And we have a problem because if you remember not too long ago, we promoted officers from the rank of inspector up to assistant commissioner of police in the month of December last year. The intention based on all um, activities was to get our second division from the rank of constables to sergeant promoted. It was on stream to take place in this month in terms of the, the board convening to deal with the corporals to sergeant where we have in excess of 496 officers to be promoted. And we also have 2,223 constables to corporal who are supposed to follow immediately after. By not having a commissioner of police to 
to um, convene the promotion advisory board, you have now close to 2,800 officers on the ground affected because their elevation, and with elevation, though there's responsibility, there's also remuneration will be impacted. And these things could have a demoralizing effect on the ability of officers to function on the ground. So what is the association's position on this? Should we allow a deputy commissioner of police to be able to deal with or treat with some of these issues? Or we believe that is something that should strictly be dealt with by the commissioner of police? Well, the association stands for three things, the truth, the law, and the facts. The law as it is, the functions that I referred to earlier falls directly under the purview of the commissioner of police. So we wouldn't want to see no aversion from the law. We wouldn't support that. And the yeah, reality but would is... Would you be in support of the law being changed then? That's what I'm asking. Could you kindly repeat? No, I'm saying, would you be in support of the law being changed considering that now you're talking about 2,800 police officers just being stuck because we don't have a, 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 a commissioner of a substantive commissioner of police? But that is a good question. Our, our interpretation or our response to that will be one where we, we, we would like to see something be done in terms of how we can go about addressing the issue of appointing a commissioner or a deputy commissioner of police in a more meaningful, a more focused, a more transparent and accountable manner. And in keeping with what takes place with the other protective services and even other institutions in Trinidad and Tobago, it is the first time we are seeing in the history of the country that we don't have a sitting or acting commissioner of police. This is historic. So having said that, the reality is as much as things would have happened been here because it doesn't occur with other institutions. It has only occurred with the police service and we find it unfortunate and we find it appalling because the police now is being treated like a ball. You, you, you kick it from point A to point B. And the thing is, we are the front line of enforcing law. We are the front line of fighting the pandemic. We are the front line in terms of bringing a level of stability. When you hear law enforcement, you think the police. And to think that the career officers who would have served over the years and would have tried to put themselves in a position to run the organization now, for some reason or the other, have not been, we did not, con we did not contribute to the debacle that is taking place right now, but yet we are in this predicament. We are calling on the authorities to address the matter with a level of urgency that it so requires because you, by failing to do what you had to do, have placed not just the police service, but the people of Trinidad and Tobago in a very precarious position, and that needs to be just urgency. Yeah. So you 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 believe that the the government took too long to act in terms of treating with the 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 well, it's not even the government, the police service commission, with treating with the merit list, with you know starting the process to get another commission of police in place. Yes, that, that was an indictment. We believe it was an indictment on the Police Service Commission because everyone knew when uh, the Mr. Griffith would have entered office three years ago. At the end of three years, we, we, we will have the process will have to continue or you revisit the process. To, to only in June create the legal notice that speaks to how we move forward, we found that that was in fact um, it was done surreptitiously, and we would have written both to the Police Service Commission, the Attorney General, and the Minister of National Security in relation to SIM. Only the Minister of National Security responded and indicated that he didn't find it to be a surreptitious act. And we are saying you had sufficient time, even as of January of this year, where the process could have taken place to go about the recruiting for the Commissioner of Police. When you yeah. leave it so late, we end up in the predicament that we would have ended up in here. And now the whole service, and by extension, everyone is placed in a volatile position. Yeah. And do you think this will inevitably affect crime or, or safety levels? We saw yesterday, not for the first time anyways, even when we had a commission of police, this, this, this scare in a downtown port of Spain. But do you believe inevitably, if things aren't fixed quickly, 
that it will affect the whole how we we are affected by crime. Um, crime is a phenomenon which continues to evolve, and by extension, I would want to say that service as an entity continues to evolve too. Now, as crime evolves, our officers need to be trained and equipped to deal with the changes that occur in the, in the, in the typology of crime, in the, in the crime trends, right? So we could arrest it. We also need to be able to partner with the community in a more meaningful manner. So we could bring up that level of safety, security, and the removal of the perception of crime being so great that you are fearful to go about your normal law-abiding um, duties without feeling that you will be become a victim to crime. That being said, we understand there's a criminal enterprise who sees crime as their ways and means for survival. That in itself, we have to use data, we have to use technology, we have to use our ability to partner with the stakeholders to bring these persons to justice. And for the persons who have been set on on, on, um, on, on the, 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 the aggressive blue collar crime that brings a lot of harm and, 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 and dismemberment to members of the community and fatalities, our officers are in fact prepared to meet these persons frontal and have them brought before justice. These things are things that we need as an organization to continue to press on, we will not relax. I am aware that the Commissioner of Police, the, the, the Deputy Commissioner of Police, Mr. McDonald Jacob, right now, is doing everything possible with the support system that he has to ensure that our operation is not affected in no negative way. Yeah. But it's only so much from the from the, the pen or the office of the Deputy Commissioner of Police, these things could be done. Right? You 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 I, I made reference to earlier the amount of things that impacts administratively in terms of managing the organization by not having a confirmed or a, a dep or a acting commissioner of police in place. So these things are, are, are grave concerns to us as an association and how it impacts our membership and impacts the people of Trinidad and Tobago. All right. Uh, Mr. Dixon, we have to leave it there, but I want to thank you so much for speaking with us this morning. And like you, I'm really hoping that we can get some kind of resolution to this issue as quickly as possible. We need it. We need it, Natalie. And thanks for the opportunity. Um, keep doing the great job you are doing. Uh, thank you so much. I'm sure today is going to be a great day. I, I, I totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all right. The um Gideon Dixon there, president of the Police Service Social and Welfare Association, speaking with us. But we have unique, not different coming up next, so do stay with us. <laughs>